Good morning. Good morning. My name is Vincat Reddy, and I'm the Chancellor of the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And I want to take a moment and welcome you all to this beautiful UCCS campus. We even worked hard to create this great weather today. So we couldn't have asked for a nicer day to hold this event. Joining me today are a few special guests. Governor Jair Polis, Colorado Springs Mayor John Southers, and First Lady Southers, Region Chair Jack Kroll, Regent Vice Chair Sue Sharkey, Regent Ilana Spiegel, Regent Emeritus Kyle Hevel, President of the University of Colorado Todd Solomon, Chancellor Emerita of UCCS Pam Shockley Zalabak, and distinguished guests from the Colorado Tourism Board. Please join me in welcoming all of them. On behalf of UCCS, I'd like to express our thanks to Governor Polis for his support of higher education. The governor has been incredibly supportive of our efforts around cybersecurity and workforce development and military partnerships, including our recent partnership with U.S. Space Force. He has also taken the time to engage directly with UCCS students. Just a few weeks ago, our Student Government Association reached out to Governor Polis and he graciously accepted an invitation to speak with them. Our students had many questions, some are tough for him, and he took the time to make them feel heard and appreciated. I often say that at UCCS, the faculty and staff have huge hearts for our students, many of whom are the first in their families to go to college and are working tirelessly to create a better future for themselves and for the communities they serve. It is very meaningful to see this care for students reflected at the highest levels of our state government. Thank you, Governor Polis, for embracing the opportunity to make our students' voices heard. On a personal note, I very much appreciate everything you do for our campus, our system, our community, and our state. I'm eager, along with others, to hear you announce the name of our new CU Regent. So now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome Governor Jair Polis to the podium to announce. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, so much. Thank you Chancellor, for hosting on this beautiful campus here at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Uh, I also want to thank Mayor Southers, uh, as well as the Chancellor, and uh, the President Solomon is here as well. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Chancellor Emerita, Pam Shockley, uh, and many others. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's helped make see you what it is today and what it will be in the future. Not only is the University of Colorado system a world-class institution of higher education, but it's also a leader in, in research and economic development. Over a billion dollars a year in federal research funds through the CU system, uh, countless jobs through spin-off technologies and companies that improve the quality of life and put food on the table for families in Colorado Springs, Denver, Boulder, and all over the state. Um, that's why when it came time to choose a new CU Regent, somebody who will be on the governing board uh, for the university and all of its campuses, it wasn't a decision that uh, I took lightly. To ensure we found the very best candidate, one that reflected the 5th Congressional District, its values, uh, the future of the institution, we opened up the application process to the public, we shared it far and wide. Uh, we received 19 uh, great applications from excellent candidates. My office spoke to every one of them. I personally interviewed the top seven candidates. Uh, and among them were, were several that would have made excellent regions. But there was one who really stood out above and beyond the candidates as somebody who would work hard to make CU more affordable, uh, to cut costs and waste, to make uh, the university an even more important part of the, the future of our great state of Colorado. And today I'm proud to announce that the new regent from the University of Colorado representing the 5th Congressional District is Ken Montera. Ken, if you'd like to join me. I'll say a few more words. Ken has deep ties to this community and to Colorado. Ken grew up in Pueblo. 
He's a first-generation college goer, and we know the particular challenges that the University of Colorado system has to be able to successfully reach out to first-generation college goers. And he's also an example, a great example and model of what a college education can do. Ken's father and grandfather worked at the steel mill in Pueblo, and Ken was the first to attend a university. In fact, he credits the discussions he had with his high school guidance counselor as the person who opened his eyes to the possibility of life after high school. His guidance counselor encouraged him to apply for the President's Leadership Class Scholarship, which he received, and that is what he credits a lot of his success in life to. His experience at the University of Colorado Boulder was transformative, set the foundation for a very successful career in business and also his life. Now, after a long and storied successful career in business, he's returned to Colorado and wants to give back to his community, his state, and his alma mater uh, that gave him and his family so much. Thanks to his commitment and vision to a more affordable and accessible college degree, to all three campuses of the University of Colorado, uh, to really the role that higher education can play in providing opportunity to young people from all backgrounds, from all parts of the state, and indeed from all parts of the country. I know that Ken will be an excellent steward of the promise that the University of Colorado brings to so many families to help others achieve their full potential, as well as to help the university itself live up to its full potential as an economic dynamo for the state of Colorado. With that, it is my honor to introduce our next CU Regent, Ken Montero. Thank you, Governor. I really appreciate that uh, vote of confidence. Like the Governor said, this is very personal for me. I grew up down the road in Pueblo in a blue collar family. My grandfather and father both worked at the steel mill and neither one of them had an opportunity for a, a higher degree. Um, if it wouldn't have been for that high school counselor, a CU grad, that suggested I apply for the President's Leadership Class Scholarship, I probably wouldn't have ended up at CU Boulder. But I'll tell you what, it changed my life. It made a huge difference, and it still reflects in everything that I do today. Um, it allowed me to get a degree at the Leeds School of Business with a focus on marketing, international business, and finance. That led to a 30-plus year career in corporate America working for four Fortune 200 companies, and that allowed me to gain experiences that I probably would have never had growing up in, in a small town in southern Colorado. I worked for Johnson & Johnson, PepsiCo, Baxter Healthcare, and ultimately Limited Brands. My final responsibility, I had over 45,000 associates that I was responsible for, multi-billion dollar budgets. I set brand strategy and delivered against that, and maybe most importantly, hired executive talent for the organization, because without talent, you have nothing. But I can tell you that that education didn't stop in the classroom. Probably as powerful as the classroom was outside of the classroom. I didn't realize how diverse this country was and how important that diversity was in education. The people that I met, the diversity of thought, the impact that they had in the way I thought, it was extremely significant in how I think today. It instilled in me a level of curiosity that served me well both in the boardroom or at the breakfast table with my family. And I got to tell you, after raising three teenagers, you need a lot of curiosity. But that stayed, stayed with me now, and it's allowed me to make better decisions. It's allowed me to broaden my base of thinking, and I think you get to a better place of critical thinking skills when you broaden and open yourselves up to everybody's ability to think and offer something for you, and I really want to bring that to the University of Colorado. My experience over the past 30 years, I think, uniquely qualifies me to add to a great Board of Regents and to be able to deliver the future for the University of Colorado, and probably more importantly, to be able to deliver a dream for someone like me out there that's thinking, can I really get to the University of Colorado? The great news is we have four campuses now. When I was going, it was basically CU Boulder. We were just starting this campus here. But as I drive north on I-25 and I look over at UCCS, it's amazing to think how far we've come. And thanks to people like Pam Shockley that really drove that in VINCAP that continues to drive it. We have a wonderful campus in Southern Colorado that's an option for so many people at, in, in the state of Colorado. So I wanna thank you again, Governor, for this appointment, and I will do everything I can to take us into the future with as much pride as Colorado deserves. Thank you. Yes,
stay up here and we'll introduce them. Now introducing the president of the University of Colorado System, Todd Solomon. Well, thank you, Governor, and congratulations to Ken. So uh, I just wanted to start by thanking the governor and try to make this not sound funny. Is that okay? So I wanted to thank you, Governor, for, uh, for your selection and for expediting the process. We have, we have, we have a lot going on at CU, and, and we were looking forward to having, that's great, and with technical skills, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, you are an IT guy, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out. So anyway, uh, so thank you to the governor for, for expediting the process and giving us our, our, our ninth region. We're very, very grateful. And, um, and I wanted to also just take a moment to thank Chance Hill for all the con yes. contributions he made to the university. He's already in Alabama, and so, so, so we miss him. But we're so glad to have, have you with us, Ken, and, and we know that you'll do an excellent job. So I, too, am a CU alum, and, so it's, and I, too, would not be standing here today without CU. And so it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to have you on the board and to have, have another CU alum, alum with us. And, um, and like the governor said, you know, we are an extraordinary place with our four campuses, and we do extraordinary $5 billion. We're the state's third largest employer, and we graduate a ton of students each year, and those students are changing the world. And not to mention the research that the, that the governor that the governor uh, noted as well. And so we we are an, an an amazing place, and we look forward to to you being part of it and to you helping make it even better. So welcome. Yeah. Um, we also uh, would like to give that opportunity to Chancellor Emeritus Pam Shockley Zalabak to say a few words. Well, thank you, Governor, and I too want to add my thanks for the appointment of Ken Montero as the fifth congressional regent. In fact, having been the chancellor on this campus for over 15 years, I know how important it is not only to work with the entire Board of Regents, but to have a supportive regent in the fifth congressional district. Thank you, Regent Kibble, for all of the times we spent together. But I want to say that I've had the pleasure for the last couple of years to work with Ken Montera as a board member. In fact, Ken is the vice chair of the Colorado Springs Philharmonic, where I am currently serving as chair. And by the way, I told him he can't become a regent if he's going to resign from that <laughs> position. But he said he wouldn't, so I think we're all right. But the reality is he is a thoughtful, very effective person in seeing the big picture, and yet working very specifically on problems. He cares deeply about this region, about students, about the state of Colorado, and values education. I think we will see nothing but a better future for all of the CU system, but also for this campus. I could not be more pleased because for everything we have done, the best is yet to come. So thank you, Governor Polis. Thank you, Ken, and congratulations. I am very, very pleased. Thank you, Pam. Uh, and before we conclude, uh, and I want to turn it over to the mayor, and we will answer some questions, uh, I have another announcement to make today. Um, Colorado Springs has become a leader in so many areas. It's always been a leader, of course, in uh, not just the active duty military presence, but one of the greatest places to live for retired military, a uh, great place for aerospace and military contractors. Um, it is also becoming a leader in Colorado in the tourism industry. Uh, and in fact, um, it has bounced back stronger than ever before. Uh, new features like the improvements in the new visitor center at Pikes Peak. I was able to join uh, the mayor there for the dedication on I think we have our seasons confused because that was a cold July day, right? June. June. It was a, like a 25 degree July day, and now it's like a 65 degree December day. I don't know what's going on. Um, but also the downtown revitalization, the stadium, um, those those cool sculptures that look really uh, futuristic. But it's Colorado Springs is on the map, and in fact, the tourism industry uh, generates billions of dollars for our state. Uh, and the Pikes Peak region is becoming an increasingly important player in that industry. 
um, and supported the industry, make sure that we need to have voices from across the state, letting their expertise to, uh, to make sure that uh, Colorado is on the map for national and international travelers, as well as by visitors from across the state visiting the Pikes Peak region, uh, spending their money in local businesses. That's why today, in addition to announcing the new CU Regent, we are also thrilled to be announcing a new member of the Colorado Tourism Office Board of Directors. That's a very important board for our state. It's one of our great tourism uh, and uh, business leaders here in Colorado Springs, Nick Reggae. Nick, please join us. Come on up. Nick is, uh, and I think this is his undershirt that he's wearing, but he's president of the Colorado Switchback Soccer Team. That's a switch now. I figured. I saw the blue. Uh, go Switchbacks. And Nick has really been helping to build community here in Colorado Springs. He knows how important tourism is to the Colorado way of life. Congratulations, Nick. I look forward uh, to working with you to move forward the Pikes Peak region and our entire state tourism industry forward. Welcome, Nick. Thank you, sir. So uh, here in Colorado Springs, uh, we have uh, a strong mayor that really understands uh, the future of the Pikes Peak region. Colorado Springs is the leading city in the Pikes Peak region. Not only traditionally, great place to do business, great place to live, great place for active duty and retired military and for contractors, but also increasingly a statewide national and international education hub uh, as embodied by the appointment of the new region and our presence here at UCCS today, and a statewide national and international tourism hub, uh, which Nick Regain will work closely with the city, the county, and the region to further their goals. It's my honor to introduce the mayor of Colorado Springs, John Suthers. Thank you, Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, these two announcements that the governor has made today of appointments to the CU Regents uh, and the State Tourism Board are good news for Colorado Springs. This is a good day for Colorado Springs. We're talking about two things that are the lifeblood of this city. Number one, UCCS. I've lived here all my life. I remember, I'm not sure there's a lot of us left, but I remember the day in 19... 64, 65, it started in 65, so probably a couple months before that, when uh, the announcement was made that uh, Governor Love and uh, Hewlett Packard had struck a deal. Hewlett Packard agreed to come to Colorado Springs in exchange for them setting up a branch campus of UCCS with a graduate engineering program. And here we are all these years later uh, with, uh, you know, a campus of over 12,000 people that's really on the move. This is a fantastic part of uh, the Colorado Springs economy today. And I want to congratulate Ken uh, on taking on this responsibility. Uh, and I want to congratulate Governor Polis for making a fantastic choice. Uh, I've gotten to know Ken pretty well over the last couple of weeks, learned a lot about him. He, he's an outstanding choice. Uh, the governor, uh, you know, uh, has dealt with some political realities here uh, in terms of the 5th District and the uh, political demographics of the 5th District. He's appointed a guy who actually ran for the statewide uh, regent seat in 2018, learned a lot about what's involved uh, in governing the University of Colorado at the time, uh, learned a lot about what it's like to run for uh, political office in the state of Colorado. Uh, you've got a first-generation college student uh, who attributes uh, his success in life to the breaks that he got uh, and what he learned at the University of Colorado. He loves the University of Colorado, uh, and he's a very, very successful business person. Governor, I don't think you could have made a better choice. Uh, and we in, uh, in Colorado Springs in the 5th uh, District are very, very delighted at the choice. Not only is uh, UCCS a big part of our economy, but tourism is a huge part of our economy. Billions of dollars uh, each year. And we need an energetic uh, spokesman for this region uh, at the State Tourism Board. And I can personally attest that Nick Reagan is an energetic spokesman uh, for Colorado Springs. Nick and I have had our differences through the years. He tried to cram a big stadium into a very small park one time, and I said, Nick, you're nuts. Uh, and uh, luckily, uh, we talked him out of it. And uh, now we've got a fantastic 
uh, stadium, and Nick's doing a fantastic job uh, running it. And I think he's going to be an outstanding spokesman for the Tourism Board. Governor, another great uh, uh, selection. So, folks, it's a great day for Colorado Springs. It's a great day uh, to celebrate. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and we'll take questions in just a moment. I'll just share a story. I was, I was just telling Ken, and by the way, it's to his credit that he ran for regent. I mean, it's one thing when people heard this was posted and they're like waking up one day and they say, well, I'll be a regent. Ken has wanted it. One, he really wants to serve University of Colorado. That's a point in his favor. But I also said this is a heck of a lot easier way to become a regent than a year-long statewide campaign doing 36 county fairs and 42 Lincoln dinners and whatever else you did. Um, and I'm very excited that you have the opportunity to do that. But I would also add that that statewide campaign will inform your work as a regent. And the fact that you talk to kids about CU in Grand Junction, in Trinidad, in Fort Morgan, uh, will only make you a more effective regent, uh, representing the 5th Congressional District, but of course, looking at statewide governance for the University of Colorado system. Uh, with that, we'll be happy to take some questions. Great. Any questions? Mr. Yes, go ahead. I am. I am. Yeah, I wouldn't have taken the responsibility if I wasn't planning on running uh, in just a few months. <laughs> Any other questions? We're going to have two final speakers to close it out. We have two regents from the statewide system who have joined us, the chair, Jack Kroll, the vice chair, Sue Sharkey. Uh, I'll invite them up. Are there any additional questions? Yes, go ahead. So what is your current party affiliation? Mine? I'm registered Republican. Yeah, and I was the Republican nominee for Regent for the state. That's what I was referencing. That he, he so he he didn't just wake up uh, two weeks ago, saw an article and said, "I want to be a Regent." He worked hard to become a Regent, and that didn't work out for him. But this does, and and it's and it's the same job. And, and I'm excited as the opportunity to do that. He has the opportunity to give back. Any additional questions? Uh, we have the chair and the vice chair of the Board of Regents with us to say a few words. Uh, Jack Kroll and Sue Sharkey. Thank you, Jack, it's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Congratulations. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Well, uh, I just want to give my congratulations to Regent Montero. We look forward to getting you sworn in. We actually have a meeting tomorrow, and I don't know if we can get you sworn in in time for that, sure. but, but we, wanna, we want you on, on, on deck and, and helping us out as soon as possible. And, and, and it's nice, nice to see so many wonderful faces, and thank you, Mayor Southers, for your remarks, and, and Governor Polis, and, and Chancellor Reddy, and, and President Solomon. You know, the Board of Regents is, is a uh, odd duck, so to speak, in, in many ways. We're, we're one of the few elected boards in the country uh, but we take our work seriously and we work together uh, on many, many issues in a bipartisan manner. And that's why I'm glad to have my colleague, Regent Sharkey, here serving as the vice chair. Uh, we've served together now for almost six years, and Sue is our longest serving regent. So when it comes to taking advice, you better listen to Regent Sharkey on how this job gets done. Um, we have an immense impact to the state of Colorado, as President Solomon mentioned. You know, we're a $5 billion budget. One out of every four college degrees in the state of Colorado is awarded by a CU campus. And so we take that work seriously. And, and the most exciting day, I can guarantee you, Regent Montera, of your tenure on the board is going to be when you get to stand up on stage and shake the hands of the students who did all the work to graduate. And like you, many of them will be first generation students. And so with that, I'm going to hand things over for a few remarks now from Vice Chair Sue Sharkey. Thank you, Chair Kroll. The Regents um, were committed to uh, making sure that CU meets the needs of every Coloradan across the state. We serve as a voice for constituents, their interests, their perspectives, and their concerns. Um, and I want to join my colleagues in welcoming um, Kim Montera to uh, join our board as the newest 5th Congressional District Regent. And I'm proud to say that I supported and voted for Ken Montera uh, here several years ago. And I just agree the governor made the best pick for this, for this Board of Regents and for the 5th Congressional District. And I know he'll be a big support not only for the system, but will have a particular interest, I believe, in UCCS. 
Uh, thank you, Governor Polis, for your selection. And thank you, Ken, for your willingness to step up and to continue to serve CU as you've done, not only as a student at CU, but across your career and continued to always remember your alma mater. And now you get to serve as a regent. This is a good day for us. Thank you. Thank you all. And, uh I didn't realize you were meeting tomorrow. We'll get the paperwork signed and dated so you're official. Uh, the reason we did move expeditiously is, as you may know, the University of Colorado system is undertaking a search, a presidential search right now. And it is very important that the Pice Peak region has a voice in that, and just as importantly, buy-in in the process and with the new president. Uh, and I'm really excited that you'll be able to sit at that table, hopefully as soon as tomorrow, uh, and uh, be able to be part of that process. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, go Buffs. Go Buffs.